guys, welcome back to video number two of area of study two. This one is all about the properties of non-metals. So what are some of the properties of non-metals? Thinking back to our previous video, uh, I remember that it's going to be a liquid or a gas at room temperature because it has very low melting and boiling points. So these two are definitely related to each other. Uh, we also know that they're non-conductors of electricity or heat because we have no free moving charged particles. So with this one, they definitely have free moving particles, but they just can't move, they're just not charged. Yeah, so they, they, we're gonna explain why they're not charged as we go through this. So this is already on your sheet, so you don't need to fill anything in, that's good. Excellent. But why are they like this? And it's all got to do with two different types of forces. So we're gonna learn these two words, intra and intermolecular bonding. So this is actually on the next page. Uh, and then we come back here in a minute if we need to. So what you can see is there are no charged particles present. If there are no charged particles present, that means that we can't conduct uh, any electricity or heat. So we need to have no charged particles. Now, what you get with this is you get weak forces. These forces here are weak between the particles. They are called inter, meaning between, molecular forces. They're not very attracted to each other, each one of these molecules. But within the molecule itself, the forces within the molecule in here are really, really strong and they are called intra or within. Okay, so within the molecule, they're really, really strong. So let's just summarize that on the next page. So now we're on the second page of the covalent notes. It says that there's a big blank, covalent molecular substances are made up of lots of small molecules being attracted to each other. Okay, so that's our first sentence there. Covalent molecular substances are made up with lots of small molecules being attracted to each other. Now it creates two types of bonding. It creates the bonding within a molecule and that's the intramolecular bonding. Um, think about, there's another word that we use sometimes called the intranet. So when we put things on SharePoint, that's like your intranet. Yeah, so that's within the school yeah we can't go outside of the school it's just within the school that's the intranet uh, these are really really strong bonds think about how much even though we're all apart right now how much we are really really close to each other yeah and we we we, we love to be together so intramolecular bonding is all about that bonding within the molecule and it's really really strong now intermolecular bonding is like the difference between us and the boys school yeah they are on a, somewhere else, they're over there, and our bond between them really girls, is it very strong? Is it? No, it's gonna be quite weak. Okay, so the intermolecular bonding is about being between the different molecules, and it's very, very weak. So it doesn't take much energy to break. Now, if it doesn't take much energy to break, what we're gonna end up with is we're gonna end up with very low melting and boiling points. Because if you don't take much energy to break apart those intermolecular bonds, then it means that they can move apart and become gases and liquids much more easily than a big lattice can. Okay, so the last two gaps, it says within a molecule, bonding is called in, sorry, within a molecule is called intra, molecular bonding between the molecules is called intermolecular bonding intramolecular bonding really really strong yeah whereas intermolecular bonding is much weaker it doesn't take much energy to break them apart at all and there ends our introduction to covalent substances and inter and intramolecular bonding <laughs>